for Miss Milky the Clown, Nabooboo Magic 2012, 2012 Truthers. You guys, I really, really, really appreciate it. And it's nice to get some confirmation that, you know, my theories, my contentions are not bizarre. They're not from another planet. It's not nothing crazy. It's sound. And I think I've got every reason to be suspicious of the alternative media. And we'll get deeper into that before I go into the Intel Hub, Higgins, and Natural News, and Alex Jones. I know a lot of you are anxious to hear what happened there, but I want to upload my screen capture evidence so you can log on. I'm going to call it Exhibit A and open another blog, and you'll be able to look at these screen captures yourself and judge for yourself, you know, because, hey, maybe I'm wrong, you know, but I want you to think and I want you to come to your own conclusion. That's what's important. Now, tonight, as I've been promising, I want to talk about the four herds very briefly, it's not going to take long, and it's kind of a social classification I've come up with because what I noticed was, and even myself, I fell victim to you know their strategies and their plans within the alternative media because like most people, I became suspicious of the mainstream media, found out it was pretty much nonstop lies on the news every night or just total you know omission of the pertinent facts. So then like anyone else, I'm looking amongst the alternative media, and then amongst the alternative media, when I and really got involved in it and found out what was going on while I look back on the on what I call the second herd and nothing derogatory meant by it at all, just a classification, call them sheep or whatever. But until people come to the conclusion, the eventual obvious conclusion that Socrates did that, you know, we really don't know very much. We really don't know very much. Our best research and study and spending all our time, you know, looking all over the place for answers. You know, in my opinion now, I, I don't have all the answers, and I, I doubt most people do. So let's look at the first herd, and this is the one everyone's familiar with. You call them sheeple. Again, nothing derogatory meant by that. I'm just trying to classify these different groups of people that are behaving in different ways, and they're believing different things. And I'll read from my article called The Four Herds. The first herd. The first herd lives and dies by the word of the mainstream media. What Diane Sawyer and Dan Rather say is law, reality, the truth, end of story. It's very, very hard to awaken a member of the first herd. After all, it's such a comfortable, pleasant reality in which they live. Members of the first herd are often referred to as sheeple, and in a manner of speaking, they are sheared on a regular basis. That would be our financial collapses every 10 years cyclically. There is a theory that many of the first herd know of the other two herds, but prefer a good shearing every now and then to the reality of the desert of the real. I use a lot of quotes and <clears throat> phrases from The Matrix because, philosophically speaking, that movie is very accurate. Only my contention is with the second herd, as I said in a previous show, when Neo is awakened in his container, uh, a fair analogy would be he would open that container and then find himself in a yet another container that's still yet another sub-reality, maybe closer to the truth, but still not the entire truth. So the first herd lives in an automated society. You know, if you read Bill Cooper's works, and especially uh, Behold the Pale Horse, he goes into social automation uh, with a chapter called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Very interesting. I've written an analysis of that as well, and that's on my WordPress blog if you want to look into that. And it's important you understand that society is automated. Look around you. Today what happened in Gainesville, Florida, the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks came to play the Gators. People got drunk as usual, painted their bellies up, and danced around. My mom called me earlier to say, are you all right, son? There's helicopters and ambulances all over town. I said, Mom, it's game night. You know, sometimes a police officer was run over and killed in the street. So it's a social automation. They, they know exactly how to get these people to behave in a certain way. If you have alcohol legal and it's readily accessible and you have these sports events, you can pretty much put two and two together and, and, and see how people are going to act. So it's, it's critical understanding social automation. And a lot of what I'm telling you tonight with the four herd concept goes hand in hand with the protocols of Zion, protocol number 12, control of the press because they have to approach different uh, groups of people differently. Like I say, those in the alternative media searching branches, they're already very suspicious, or you should be very suspicious, and you should be very critical. But again, I say they've been fooled very, in a very sublime manner into thinking they're getting the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and getting it right now. Okay, That's very critical you understand that. They enjoy an automated society. They don't yet realize how fun thinking for yourself can actually be. Wake members of the first herd gently, slowly, or they will bite and kick you with their hooves. And again, that's the, the sheeple we refer to, and they, they watch a lot of mainstream and live and die by that, and they really actually believe 
a lot of what we think may be psychological operations or some kind of special operation like Quran burnings and the Muhammad films, they may think that's actually organic and real, and those events are actual real events that are perpetrated in an you know, organic fashion, and nothing is a hoax, and nothing is a pre-planned event like a false flag type thing. Now, let's look at the second herd, because that's the herd that I, I really believe that a lot of alternative people are being fooled right now, and they're being socially automated themselves with these DHS bullet acquisition and police brutality memes, and I'm not saying... You know, there's not some kind of takeover maybe going on. There's plenty of evidence for that. But I think what they're trying to do is instill fear and shake people up and, <clears throat> excuse me, try to create this powder keg type environment where, who knows, maybe some type of uh, incident with the police and people on the street will cause some kind of uprisings like the Rodney King incident. I watched a YouTube video the other day that a gentleman made that contention, and it, it made a whole lot of sense. You know, if you leave people desperate and, and there's a lot of police, well, men, not a lot. I mean, if they promote it, it seems like a lot of police brutality. And maybe it's higher than ever with returning veterans coming back from Iraq. I don't know. I'm not uh, up too up to date on that. But I tend to think they're kind of promoting it heavily. And that's my example. Within the, within the second herd, there's particular means being pushed forward. And, the, and things are being avoided and not talked about. You'll get your fast and furious and, and get your dose of that. But when it comes to plume gate and this giant, uh, a conspiracy to hide the plume and fallout, and then you look at the death toll and everything. We'll look at that quickly. I need to hurry up here. Um, so let's get right back to this, getting distracted. Okay, the third herd, that's the Socratic herd. And that's what I say that uh, if, you're, if you're aware that there's a lot you don't know and there's a lot you're not going to know, because if you think about the Illuminati and the power elite and the global elite, they, they are masters of the occult. They've been collecting this information and, uh, and compiling it for hundreds of years. What do we get? Well, we get a lot of disinformation, a lot of stuff they don't even talk about. So it's very difficult to come to conclusions when the information is being controlled to such a degree. Let me get back. I missed the second herd. Second herd. Second herd thinks they have awakened. Most are well-intentioned people searching for the truth, but they are corralled by the likes of Alex Jones, Mike Adams, and other quote-unquote alternatives and quote-unquote independent media figureheads who sell only government-approved propaganda and never offer any solutions. You know, talking about solutions, the one thing I've noticed, a complete absence in the alternative media is a solution for the chemtrail problem. Okay, we're getting sprayed. I'm getting sprayed here every day in Florida, almost every day, and it's getting kind of ridiculous. And in all this time, I've never seen a bona fide solution put forth to try and get the chemtrail stopped, right? So we know that Alcoa is the number one aluminum manufacturer in the world. And we know the, the, the most common substance found in chemtrails is purported to be aluminum oxide, which is a leftover in the process of making aluminum. Now, Alcoa meets with Bilderberg every year, so it's just two and two putting that together to fill, figure out the conspiracy there. So the obvious solution would be to, to employ Gandhi's power of the purse, and we have a boycott, a boycott on aluminum drinks, a boycott on aluminum. If you buy an old used aluminum bike at a store, that would be one thing, but no one has initiated a boycott on aluminum, and that's the only way you're going to get that to change because it's now a corporate world. There's really not countries anymore. There's not nations anymore. It's these giant corporations, and all they understand is cash flow, cash flow. That's all they understand. So there's no solutions being put forth in the alternative media. By and large, sometimes there are, and like I say, not everyone's a troll, not everyone's a shill, and not every outlet is a controlled outlet. But for Plumegate to have not arisen this summer in the fashion that I'm describing it to as it should have, I, I think we can you know, conclude that there's something amiss in the alternative media and, and grave issues like this particular one that, that could have affected the outcome of the election are simply you know, swept under the rug. And if they're touched upon, it's only because, like I say, I wrote multiple articles fingering certain people and saying, hey, what's going on here? They're not even writing about this. It's been out for months and months. Okay, back to the read. Uh, they're fear-mongering tricksters that tell the truth but not the whole truth, and they don't always give it right away. And they're not always accurate. There's media uh, mal uh, malpractice, and fact-checking is not going on. My initial mistake that I, as when I worked for Intel Hub, I asked Bob twice to make this correction. He never did. Well, by the time the Prison Planet show came around on the 11th of May, you have Mike Adams up there repeating this erroneous 16 or 18,000 stillborn death figure, which I had gone back under the thread immediately and made a correction and said, hey, I made a mistake. It's, you know, that's an overall estimate. It's 800-something infant fatalities, you know. So 
They're not fact-checking, and these articles are being massively distributed as like a copy, paste, or mirror, as they say, even though they're not mirrored accurately every time, as I'll show you later once I upload my evidence, and we'll, we'll examine that. So there's, it's not accurate, and they're not always giving you the full truth right away. <clears throat> okay, back to the read. The second herd has not yet realized just how deep the level of deception goes. The second herd thinks the deception is contained within the first rank media outlets, and that's a term used in the protocols of the wise men of Zion. The first rank outlets, would, an example would be ABC, CBS, and they're called first rank because they never differ from their position. You know, when you watch CBS, it's always a war on terror, and it's drones are a good thing and all that kind of stuff. They never deviate, and people are so much skeptical of them these days, hopefully, because of that. They never really deviate from their establishment viewpoint. Second herd thinks that's all contained with the first rank media outlet. I say to you, it's very foolish to assume that this Operation Mockingbird, original Mockingbird, was only going to be you know, relegated to the mainstream press. And my example of that is, you know, if you think about them planning ahead of time, they wouldn't say, let's take control of the mainstream press and get a lockdown on that, but leave the you know, the general public at large to have the alternative media and let them have the independent media and talk amongst themselves and figure things out. Now, that just doesn't make any sense. From a logic standpoint, you would control the mainstream first. Knowing the Internet was arising in the near future, you would plant agents early on and start doctoring them and building them up, and then you intercept the flow of information in the alternative media that develops and grows, and that's just a strategy that's a common sense logical strategy. To go a bit deeper down the rabbit hole, you would then plant a few agents amongst the independent media as well. And like I say, my, my depth sound has always been Plumegate, the NRC FOIA documents, and the multiple agency conspiracy contained within to hide the radioactive plume and fallout. Now, the death tolls at 40,000 plus, and we can go over numbers with that if I get to that. But in the independent media as well, they want to place some figureheads in there. It's like a really, you're covering all of the board. You want to cover the entire map. I mean, this is strategy. And these pe people have money. We're talking, I've heard, from 350 to $500 trillion, <clears throat> excuse me, for the Rothschilds alone. And then you have the Standard Oil and Rockefeller. And, I mean, and plus, plus, folks, as we all well know, they can print all the money they want. So as long as people will perform these deeds for them, these evil people, and I've come to the conclusion there really are just evil people that will do anything for cash. That's part of how they're able to carry these plans out, you know, until people will grow up and realize that some things aren't worth money. It's better to live in a cardboard box and continue this business. Okay, back to the second herd. They think it's contained within the first-ranked outlets, but obviously they have the strategy and money to move it beyond that. They also believe the alternative and independent media are pure, pristine, and innocent like a babe. Far from it. Perhaps they have not sat for long periods of time and contemplated just what $500 trillion can do in this world. Deception is mathematical. Will the second herd ever figure this out? Not as long as they underestimate their opposition's ability to control the flow of information. That is very important. I think most people in the alternative media searching for answers are very much so underestimating the opposition's ability to control the flow of information. Let me give you a nice little example. In the run-up intro to the Alex Jones Info Wars, when I used to listen to it, there's the Hillary Clinton little soundbite. We're in an information war, and we aren't leaving that war. Okay, and the fact of the matter is, I've thought about this very carefully. Well, if they're in cahoots, to coin a southern term, if they're in cahoots, Hillary makes that statement on purpose. All right, they know they're whipping our butt in the information area. I tell you, they really are, and they know this, but... It is a military strategy. It's the ancient art of war by Sun Tzu to fool your opponent into thinking he is, in fact, winning. He is, in fact, ahead. So your opponent relaxes. He says, hey, we've we got him, Alex Jones. We're pounding him. We've got the new world order on the run, it says. We've got him on the run. Well, I'm thinking to myself, we don't have him on the run. As a matter of fact, they got us right where they want us because the largest, most damning issue of this election cycle, it never came to be paraded and highlighted like it should have. That's my... You know, I rest my case on that alone on a larger scope. That evidence, you know, is the lack of evidence, if you will. If you look amongst the Facebook people who are the alternative media group on there, there's not a lot about the NRC FOIA documents. I haven't seen it. And if there is, it doesn't tie it into the larger picture with Obama, give you the fatality numbers, give you the history of three miles, you know, and give you that big lock, big picture to paint that so people can make a decision. 